Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make sticky rice rolls. Uh, this makes a really good lunch item. You can use it for supper as well. Um, now if you're not used to sticky rice, you're really missing out. Okay? This goes by three different names in the store. It's either sold as sticky rice, sweet rice, or glutinous rice. Um, usually you'll see it as sweet or glutinous, but uh, in recipes it's always referred to as sticky rice. Now, if you've tried to make sticky rice and you've had failures before, one of the reasons probably is because you tried to make too much. Okay? This comes out best in small quantities, and luckily the recipe I'm doing today needs two cups. So I buy a big bag of this and just keep it in a container like this. This is what uh, raw sticky rice looks like. And for this recipe, you need two cups of the raw rice, which I'm going to put in my uh, inner container from the rice cooker. So there's one, two, an equal amount of cold water. So there's the second cup. Give that a good stir. The rice will clump together a bit. You do not want to rinse this, okay? You want to keep all the stickiness in here. And you just soak this at room temperature for at least an hour, preferably two. While the rice is soaking, I'm going to prepare the filling. Um, for today's filling, and you can make the filling of your choice. You don't have to use pork, you can use chicken, you can use vegetables, whatever you want. Okay, I find this makes a nice flavor combination. So I've got a pack of three pork chops here that actually weighs exactly half a kilo, or 500 grams, as chance would have it. A pack of green onions that I'm going to wash and trim and chop. Um, the ginger is going to be for frying in the oil to um, flavor it without actually having any pieces of ginger in it. I'll show you how to do that. And for the seasonings, I've got some hoisin sauce, some Shaoxing uh, wine. You can use sherry if you want. I've got some soy sauce and some sesame oil. So I quickly washed these and got rid of any of the dead bits. And I'll just take the ends off and roughly chop these. You don't want these too fine because they're going to be about the same size as the pork pieces. I always prefer to do um, a hand cut instead of a machine grind on this type of recipe. Uh, because I like to control um, the size of the pieces and I'll show you what I mean so get one of the pork chops and just cut a couple of pieces off first right? and then lay them on top of each other and just cut down through them I find two is a good amount. Uh, if you try to go three or four, they start to slip and you could cut yourself. And then after you've got that done, just roughly chop them into pieces about the size of the green onion. Just push those aside. Do the rest. And now I must say at this point, whether you trim the fat or leave it in is up to you. I trim it because I use a fair amount of oil to fry the ginger and I like to reduce the fat content. If you like it a little fattier, you can of course leave it in. So once all the pork has been chopped into the pieces that you want, you can either just let it go or keep chopping to get it the smaller size that you want. I'm okay with this, so I'll just uh, put it in the bowl and add the seasonings now. Again, there are no pre precise amounts for seasoning. This is all to taste. I do like a good big spoon of hoisin. 
on a splash or two of the Shaoxing wine. Whoops, that's a pretty big splash, but it'll cook off, don't worry. Add some soy sauce. Some sesame oil. Give this a good stir. And as you can see, it absorbed all that seasoning quite nicely. So take this and leave it in the fridge to marinate uh, for I'd say about 20 minutes or so, or half an hour. So snap a piece of the ginger off. Uh, you're only going to be using this for flavoring. So cut off the outsides. You don't have to worry about um, peeling this. It's pretty clean when you buy it. You can give it a rinse if you need to. And just cut off the outsides. Now, most of the flavor is in the very thin edge of the ginger, so you don't actually want to peel this since you're using it just to flavor the dish. And cut it down in big thick slices that you can easily get out of the pan. Yeah, I'd say those are about an eighth of an inch. Yeah, that's just good enough. Now, just look at each one and if there's any dark bits or uh, pieces that have dirt in them because ginger does have little nooks in it. Just make sure you cut that out first. Pour some oil. I have my uh, peanut sesame blend here. Pour some oil, just enough to thinly cover the bottom of a medium pan. And start that on medium heat. And cover the bottom of the pan with the ginger slices. This technique is very useful for any kind of stir-fried dish that you want to make because you get a very nice um, back tone of ginger without having any actually in the dish and unless your friends have very sophisticated palates they're going to have a hard time picking out what that nice flavor is. This has only been on for a few minutes but I do want to zoom in so you can see the oil bubbling under the ginger slice here. Okay. So when they've been frying a bit, just get a pair of tongs and turn them all over. and just let them sizzle away like that. By cooking these slowly over medium heat like this what you're doing is you're extracting the maximum amount of the volatile oils uh, from the ginger and transfusing that into uh, your cooking oil to flavor it. When the ginger is bubbling all over like that and it's starting to get a golden brown on the edges and the oil is acquiring a light brown color, you've gotten about all the flavor you're going to get out and just pick these out. Add the marinated meat mixture from the fridge to the hot pan. Toss that with your tongue. Turn the heat up just a bit. When the meat is um, nearly cooked through, that's what I mean when you toss it, you don't see any pink pieces. You may see a pink edge here or there, but no completely pink pieces. That's when you add the green onions. Stir those in. Let them wilt down a bit while you get your uh, thick and are ready. 
So to thicken it, you're going to add a teaspoon or two of some kind of starch. I have tapioca starch. You can use cornstarch. Add that to about a half a glass of water, half a cup of water. These glasses I have are exactly one cup, so this is about a half a cup. Stir that up and keep it on the side until you're ready to add it. Yeah, so when the green onions are softened up and they get bright, bright green, stir up your mixture because it will settle fairly quickly and just pour it right in the middle of the pan. Mix it up a bit with the tongs. Let it sit for a minute. So when the sauce is thickened up enough that it looks like a thick syrup on the bottom, this is when I turn it off and take it off the heat. This is going to cool down completely and it will thicken up when it cools. Time to check on the rice. It's been soaking for an hour and a half. And if you tilt it, I don't want to disturb it too much. If you tilt it, you can see that there's a bit of water at the edge, but not too much. Okay, so this is just great. And I'm just going to set this in the rice cooker and let it go until it says it's ready. The filling is completely cooled. I set it on the back porch so you can see that the sauce is congealed and it's not all runny. Now, my rice cooker has an automatic timer. This went off as cooked after about half an hour and I did leave it in there uh, for another 15 minutes to just soak up some extra moisture and I'll just fluff it a little for you and if you've never seen sticky rice this is what it looks like because it's sticky and it holds together really nicely now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn both of these out on plates to cool and then I'll put the rolls to wrap together I got the rice nearly cooled down it's not completely cold because it's a little easier to work with if it's a bit warm okay now you assemble these using some plastic wrap and either a sushi mat and if you haven't got a sushi mat yes you can use a magazine and I'll show you how to do both because um, I'm assuming most people can lay their hands on a magazine so I've got the plate of filling over here and as you can see what I've done is I've divided it roughly into six portions because this makes um, six sticky rice rolls which is kind of handy Okay. so what you should do is get a piece of plastic wrap fairly long, longer is much better than shorter for this just put it on the top of here and then just divide this into sixths if you haven't done it yet and scoop a piece onto the plastic wrap get your fingers wet with some cool water assuming they're clean of course to start off with and then what you do is just push the rice out Now, this does take a little practice because I know how much each one takes and I think I left a little bit too much somewhere else so I'm going to grab a bit more. Worst that's going to happen is your rolls will be uneven and you'll have either a bit more filling or a bit more rice and you can just eat that. Yeah, that's about the right size. Okay, so after that you're going to get your spoon and spoon the filling right into the middle with a bit of the sauce and if it goes astray a little you can get your smaller spoon 
to basically put that all in the middle. Then, grabbing both sides of the mount, just pick it up and push it together like that. Bring that back. Okay. Now, without touching the rice, you can use the plastic wrap to kind of nudge it and shape it, as you can see here. And what you do is take one edge, put it over, kind of tuck that in, okay, squeeze it here. Now, either you can form this freehand by hand or use the mat to kind of roll it up. Okay. And as you'll notice, the sauce is permeating the rolls, which is fine um, because you're going to be storing these in the refrigerator until you're ready to use them. What I do is I bring one of these to work for my lunch and yes, I reheat this either on a plate or a paper towel, but take the plastic wrap off first. You don't want to be heating these up in the plastic wrap. There's one. Time for the magazine. Now, if you are going to use a magazine for this, make sure that you use the spine of the magazine towards you instead of the pages. Put some of the sauce on top. Just pick it up. Squeeze it together. There you go. Yeah, the juicier you make these, the more they're going to fall apart initially. But the sauce does diffuse through the rice and it makes it much nicer to eat. Here are the completed rolls. Um, I keep these in the fridge until I use them, but I am going to heat one up now uh, just to show you what it looks like when it's cooked. So that's the microwave after a minute and a half. Um, that's because it's fresh. Usually if it was uh, in the fridge overnight, it would have to be around two minutes. Okay, so there's my sticky rice roll. You can eat it as is or drizzle a little soy sauce or hot sauce on the top if you want. Okay, I hope you liked it and try it and hope to see you again.